The Bata and Cavite interlink bridge, more commonly known as the Manila Bay Bridge, is an incredible $3.6 billion project that will hopefully change the lives of millions of residents and tourists in the Philippines. The bridge has been a dream of the Filipino government since 1987. However, actual steps toward funding, planning, design, and eventually construction didn't begin until 2017. For almost seven years, they have been working tirelessly to prepare for the Great Bridge. And finally, they've announced that construction will start sometime in 2024, as the Bataan Cavite interlink bridge will connect the provinces of Bataan and Cavite, as well as southern Luzon, millions of travelers will be able to move through many regions of the Philippines without having to pass through Metro Manila. In fact, the bridge, which will be the longest in the country, will shorten the time it takes to get from Cavite to Bataan from 5 hours to only 45 minutes. The local government also hopes that this bridge will not only cut down on pollution in the city, but also help decrease congestion and even enhance inter-island connectivity and commerce. The very first proposal for such a bridge came from the then representative Felicito Peyumo in 1987, calling it the Trans Manila Bay Crossing. By the early 2000s, Peyumo had been made chairman of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority and was finally able to put forth his plan. Two Japanese companies, Itochu Corp and NKK, came up with designs for the bridge. But neither of these plans went any further. In 2016, Peyumo presented the idea once again and finally got the ball rolling. Luckily, in 2017, the first China State Construction Engineering Corporation made an on-site assessment and decided building such a bridge was certainly possible. But that was just the first of many steps to be taken. But by 2020, it seemed they were really on their way as the National Economic and Development Authority approved the project and the Department of Public Works and Highway signed a contract with two major engineering companies, T.Y. Lin International and Pyonghua Engineering Consultants to start planning in earnest. Of course, the next step was to engineer a safe and affordable design. Fortunately, the two enormous companies, T.Y. Lin International based in the US and Pyonghua Engineering Consultants Limited from Korea worked together with Renardet SA and DCCD Engineering Corporation to create what many are saying is a fantastic plan. As of March 2023, they said that the engineering design is more than 70% complete. The Manila Bay Bridge will be 18.98 miles long, and 16 of those miles will run over water. It will have four lanes, three navigational bridges, marine viaducts, and even a space for vehicle turnaround on Corregidor Island. It will start in Barangay Alas Asin, close to the Marivelles Freeport area, include a trumpet interchange in Roman Superhighway, and have two cable-stayed bridges known as the North Channel Bridge, 1,312 feet, and the South Channel Bridge, 2,952 feet. The bridge will end in Barangay Timalan Balsahan, Naik, Cavite. At the end, the bridge will connect to the existing Cavite Laguna Expressway as well as several other existing roads on both sides. And because of the immense size and weight of the bridge, they will need to dig deep into the seabed beneath the waters of Manila Bay. They say that in some places, the footing will reach an incredible 164 feet down into the water. One of the most challenging aspects of the planning process was ensuring that large boats would be able to pass under the bridge, as it's being built on top of one of the country's major shipping routes in and out of the port of Manila. However, they expertly figured out a way to ensure the bridge will have a clearance of 133 feet in some locations, 237 feet in others, and at the lowest point, 82 feet where smaller commercial ships will still be able to pass. Another issue that has come up during the planning process is that there will be some destruction of natural landscapes and even private property on the peninsulas to build the beginning and end of the bridge. However, according to sources, these concerns are being properly addressed and minimized at all costs. The National Economic and Development Authority NEDA, already approved the project, and they claim that it will not cause any extreme environmental or personal disruptions. As with any new construction project, the environmental impact is incredibly important, especially in today's climate, as it's becoming increasingly clear that sustainable practices are not just preferable, but necessary in order to save the planet. Luckily, though they haven't outlined every detail of the construction itself, the organizations in charge of designing and building the Manila Bay Bridge are planning to use low-carbon technology and materials 
to make it as sustainable as possible. They are also promising the Filipino people that this bridge will not become a white elephant, i.e. an overly expensive project that costs far more than it's worth. Finance Undersecretary Adita Tan said in a recent statement that there's no way it will become a white elephant because they thoroughly studied it. We actually invested in the preparation of the project. Essentially, the plan is to execute the construction in seven phases or contract packages to ensure efficient completion. And the NEDA claims that they don't just plan to build, 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 but instead to build better more. And if construction does start in 2024, as they've promised, they believe that all seven phases of the project will be finished in just five years by 2029. In order to build an incredible bridge like the planned Bataan Cavite interlink bridge, an almost unbelievable amount of money is needed. And while most construction plans struggle to lock down sufficient funding, the estimated $3.6 billion needed for this bridge is already ready for immediate use. But of course, it's not all being provided by one entity. First, the Asian Development Bank agreed to fund $2.1 billion, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank gave $1.14 billion. The Filipino government will cover the remaining $664.23 million. However, it is crucial to remember that although they have a solid design and schedule in place for the Manila Bay Bridge, things don't always go according to plan when construction actually begins. And when that happens, typically costs increase significantly, sometimes by the billions. If this occurs, of course, the two banks and the government of the Philippines will need to reassess and maybe chip in a bit more than they originally agreed to get this giant marine bridge completed. All governments and investors for any project of this magnitude hope that the billions of dollars they're spending will become an investment. And that's exactly what they believe the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge is. It's important to understand that while the benefits do include improving the commute and travel of Philippine residents and tourists, they also hope that it will improve the local economies on both sides of the bridge and Manila itself. The president of the Philippines, Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., explained that the bridge once completed will have sufficient links with major thoroughfares in Cavite and Bataan, so that it will truly be a facilitator of interconnectivity and linkages among our people and provinces. So the connection between these two areas will improve transportation and local commerce. But additionally, the bridge will also reduce transportation costs for goods and services, which will mean lower prices on many items for local residents, therefore decreasing the cost of living and assisting in combating inflation. In fact, President of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said, that will be an incredible feat when it happens and would significantly help in decongesting Metro Manila, as motorists will be able to travel without passing through the metropolis. It will also help in bringing prices down for goods and services, as the transport and logistics costs will decrease, thereby generating immense savings all around. And when asked what the benefits of the Manila Bay Bridge would be, Payumo, the man who originally thought up the grand idea, told the press, the Trans Manila Bay crossing poses no right-of-way issue. It will not only push growth outside of Metro Manila, but will also connect three regions with close to 40% of the population and with gross domestic product, GDP, exceeding 50% of our total GDP. It's also important to understand that the Bataan Cavite interlink bridge which will be one of the longest marine bridges on the planet, is just one project that the Philippine government has undertaken to improve the lives and economy of their people. In fact, the Philippine government currently has 197 priority infrastructure flagship projects in the planning stages that they hope will advance the socio-economic agenda of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. When he was elected into office in 2022, the president told his constituents that his main goal was to fix the country's value chain and improve the agricultural sector, as well as decrease the cost of food. In order to do so, he's committed to spending 5-6% to of the country's GDP on infrastructure, like the Manila Bay Bridge, the Mega Manila Subway Project, the rehabilitation of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, and much more. And the current president is extremely hopeful that this bridge is the first step toward a great future. He said in a recent statement, If this bridge is any indication of what comes next, then I should not be the only one who looks forward to the future with great optimism. One does not need to be well versed in construction and engineering to realize the magnitude of this endeavor. It is an enormously difficult and complex plan that we will have to constantly commit to achieving, which are of course for great benefits 
that Filipinos will enjoy. Overall, if construction of the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge does start in 2024, as they've promised, and go according to plan to be complete by 2029, it will certainly be considered a great success. Not only will several regions of the Philippines be more efficiently connected, but also the cost of products will decrease. There will be less traffic in downtown Manila, and the entire economy of the country could improve significantly. As far as giant construction projects go, the Bata and Cavite Interlink Bridge has had less hiccups than most, and hopefully that good luck will continue through the building process for a speedy and on-budget completion. Excited for more construction wonders? Click the video on your screen to unravel how Melbourne is constructing Australia's futuristic transportation hub. See you there.